Hi folks, Jack in the training department again for another Teardown Tuesday. And today we've got an interesting piece. This is a used temperature pressure relief valve from a dish machine booster heater. And it's a return service part that came back to us here. And we'll tear it apart and see what happened to it. First thing to notice here is the tag. And you can see there's data on the tag. We have set points here for this valve. It's designed to be in a hot system with water. And the system it's designed to be in can operate up to 150 PSI or 210 degrees Fahrenheit. So it will open on pressure if we exceed 150 PSI or it will open on temperature if we exceed 210 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, before we pull this apart, it's important to note there may not be anything wrong with it. Sometimes these get replaced incorrectly. And what can happen is, if the incorrect pressure reducing valve is used in a booster heater installation, the system will expand the cold water as it heats. The cold water transitioning to hot water will expand, take, try and take up more volume. If there's no volume for it to take up, or if there's no way for it to expand back past the pressure reducing valve, it will increase the pressure inside the uh, booster heater. And when that happens, we exceed the pressure setting on our uh, temperature pressure relief valve, and we'll pop open, we'll dump water. The dead giveaway for that is if this valve is opening up first thing in the morning, when the booster's cold and you turn it on, if that booster heating up first thing in the morning opens this relief valve, the problem is not the relief valve. This is acting as intended. The problem is actually the pressure reducer, the regulator. There are booster rated pressure reducers, but I don't have one here to show you at the moment. So let's take a look at the valve. Uh, like I said, it is used, so it's got pipe tape on it. It does have some scale buildup on the temperature sensing bulb. And you can see there's a lot of scale buildup down inside. That discoloration tells us that this valve has been leaking for quite a while. So to open it up, we're going to pull out these fasteners, but you can see these are security torques. We've talked about these before. They're a star pattern with a pin coming up through the center. So to get it apart, we need a security Torx bit. So let's get it opened up. Now, because we're under pressure here, we're going to leave these partially threaded in. And as we take this apart, you're going to see it kind of grow as that spring pressure comes out. Now we've relieved the spring pressure, we can take these fasteners the rest of the way out. It's very important that you don't take all the fasteners all the way out with something that's spring-loaded until you know exactly how much energy the spring is going to release. So as we pull this apart, a couple things to notice. First is that our interior here has so much scale buildup that it's probably hanging up it's probably not sealing anymore. And we can kind of see that on this side where the ceiling surface is really pitted. You can start to see the pitting on that ceiling surface. When this is closed, it's going to weep. It's just going to drip continuously because of all that pitting on that ceiling surface. So regardless of the reason that it was replaced, at this point there's not much you can do with it except replace it. So now in order to go further with it, it looks like we'll actually have to pop this rivet out to get the, the thermostat assembly out of this housing. So I'll go do that. I'll be right back. All right. So we chiseled off the retainer and the small rivet that was in the end here. And now we can open this up the rest of the way. So. First thing to notice is we've got an adjuster that was hidden underneath this washer. And that's like a, a calibration screw to adjust the preset tension, I think. Looks like that would push against this little cup. And then we have this really heavy spring. And this spring, I, I mean, it takes everything I've got to compress it even a little bit. And the way I got this apart was I actually clamped it in a bench vise 
so that I could take the spring pressure off the pin and get that rivet out. So down inside here, you can see we've got just this brass element that's tied into a, a small retaining system. And then we've got a rubber diaphragm. Now this spring pushes into the back of this cup when the pieces are all assembled. And it's important to remember that when we talk about the pressure, pressure is pushing across surface area. So the surface area inside here needs to be able to hold back 150 pounds per square inch. And this is pretty close to a, a square inch. So that's why this spring has so much force, is it's got to hold back all of that pressure against all this surface area. So looking at how this is put together, we've got the thermostatic element pushing up against the bottom of the plunger, and then we've got the spring pushing back. So if the unit gets too hot, this expands. And you can see when we pull it apart, it, it's actually a, a physical device that, that can expand. And when it expands, it opens up, pushes this open, lifts off the seat, and we relieve the pressure inside. The risk here is that we're so close to the boiling point of water at 210 degrees, we want to make sure that this will always open up if we start boiling to steam. So that's really the goal of this. So it opens on temperature or pressure. Most common failure methods for this are going to be pitting up here like we see in this one, where the, the piece don't, pieces don't seal anymore. The other failure methods are what we're seeing happen on the diaphragm here, where the diaphragm is starting to degrade, and you can see it kind of sloughing off there. It's kind of flaking away. The diaphragm lives a hard life on a booster heater. It's always hot, and sometimes it, it's wet you know, at a regular interval, especially once this starts to weep past. So now we've got hot water sitting on this rubber you know, pretty much all the time, and eventually it will just degrade, start to break down like what we're seeing in this part of the seal. That's pretty much it. This one's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but it's commonly misunderstood. So, thanks for joining. Hi folks, my name is Jack Kell and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. If you're already a SmartCare technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.